have to say, last night was an unusually late night here in Washington, and we were all impatient, and our staffs were impatient, the press was impatient, and as we talked to people across the, the state, what we realized was they've long been running out of patience, and I've talked about that some on this floor, but for every factory worker and hourly worker and small business owner and songwriter and uh, gig worker, they've all been telling me they are running out of time. And they have just really been very anxious for what was going to come about out of this chamber. And I know that in the days and weeks ahead as we work through getting relief to communities and individuals and small business owners and large companies, that there's going to be a lot of blame that is going to be thrown around. There are going to be some that are going to blame politicians. There are others that are going to blame the way the economy is structured. There are others still who are going to blame the health care system. But I will tell you, I think that there is a necessity to have a discussion about why we do have this current crisis. And it is because of the leadership of the Chinese government, the People's Republic of China, that leadership in Beijing. And we have gone round and round with activists and media on the point, and I shouldn't have to point out that when we say that China is to blame for the spread of the novel coronavirus that we call COVID-19. We do not mean the Chinese people as a whole, but yet we have some that do not want to say this is where it came from. I think we should stop that and we should move forward with decisions based on fact, with decisions that are based on data. And we need to begin to collect those facts and to collect that data as it pertains to this disease. This is how we get to the antivirals. It's how we get to having a vaccine. And it's how we look at lessons learned so that we don't go back through this again, so that we plan to tackle some of the unexpected occurrences that will come our way. And as we talk about facts, we do know that COVID-19 originated in Wuhan, China. From there, it spread rapidly and it has had devastating consequences. The economy is crumbling. We're working desperately to shore it up. Innocent people have been in the hospital or sick. I talked to one Tennessean this morning who said, I'm happy to report my husband is coming back around. He has been suffering for the last many days with COVID-19. We've got world, the world's healthcare professionals and what are they doing? They are working to the point of exhaustion. And what you have is Beijing's reckless communist dogma, and they're trying to blame everybody else. And today we are going to move forward with the rescue package. This is the phase three package. It is the fourth tranche of money. I'm including in that the president's emergency declaration, which put about $50 billion toward fighting this. And as we do this, and as we say, what is our way forward on, on addressing this? What we have to do is realize that our relationship with China is going to need to change and change for the better. There is no denying that the way they have conducted themselves has put that relationship on dangerous ground. And today I invite my colleagues to support the bicameral Senate Resolution 553 
and acknowledged that Beijing intentionally spread misinformation to downplay the severity of COVID-19 and baselessly denied the risk of person-to-person -person transmission of the disease. They refused to cooperate with international health authorities, including the CDC. During the early days of the outbreak, they censored doctors and journalists. We all remember what happened with the late Dr. Lee when he tried to give us the warnings. And on top of everything else, they maliciously ignored the health and safety of ethnic minorities. Mr. President, this is the easy part. The facts are there. All we have to do is acknowledge the facts that are there and use this as a beginning because this resolution is, as I said, it's bicameral, it is bipartisan in the House, and we have no reason not to push it forward and send the message that we realize what happened to cause a global pandemic. And after we acknowledge Beijing's gross malfeasance, we're going to adjust the way we think about China in the context of the economy, of our national defense, technology, human rights, and pharmaceutical manufacturing. When you think about it, the fact that Beijing intentionally downplayed the deadly nature of COVID-19 should come as no surprise. For decades, decades, China has made a business. It has been their business to search out our vulnerabilities, exploit those vulnerabilities. And then what do they try to do? They try to use that as leverage against us. So it is time for us to say no more. Now here is another component, and I've talked about this this week on the floor, our pharmaceutical supply chain. On February 27th, 2020, this year, the FDA announced the shortage of a drug used to treat victims of COVID-19. Imagine that. There was a drug shortage. They attributed the shortage to difficulties obtaining the active ingredient in this pharmaceutical. The active ingredient, they are called APIs. Now, they couldn't get it from this site in China, which was the site that manufactured it, because that site had been affected by COVID-19. So here we are. We need this component to go into a pharmaceutical. We cannot get it because the factory that produces this has been affected by COVID-19. And it's not the first time that this has happened. In 2016, we saw a shortage of an important antibiotic when the sole source of its production, the only place on the globe that produced this antibiotic was in China. And that factory was shut down. Couldn't get it. Our vulnerability is not limited to one drug or even just a handful of drugs. In 2007 and 8, 246 people died after taking a contaminated blood thinner that came directly from a factory in China. They died, 246 people, just like that. Routine inspections didn't catch the contaminant and the drugs flowed right into our medicine cabinets. 2010, regulators have also found serious problems with batches of thyroid medication, muscle relaxers, antibiotics. And this week I got an email from a Tennessean. He said, I saw what you said on the floor and I wanna let you know I take a heart medication, and it was just recalled because it contained a carcinogen, and it was made in China. Think about this. These are the pharmaceuticals we take to return ourselves to health and wellness, to manage 
chronic conditions. And here we have example after example of things that are contaminated are not what they're intended to be. These are basic, common medications. In 2018, the FDA recalled several blood pressure medications made in China that were contaminated with cancer-causing toxins. Now, I would imagine there are a few people that come to work every day in this building that take a blood pressure medication. What if you had been taking one for a period of time and it contained the cancer-causing toxins? Americans deserve better than this from their pharmaceutical supply chain. If we allow this to continue, we are going to do so at our own peril. I encourage my colleagues to support the bipartisan Securing America's Medicine Cabinet, or SAMC Act. Senator Menendez has worked on this legislation with me, and I'm grateful to him for his support. Mr. President, you are working on legislation that would address some of these issues. Bring this pharmaceutical manufacturing back into the United States of America. We need to end Chinese control over our health and wellness in this pharmaceutical supply chain. This may seem like something that is too large or too risky an undertaking, but we have already paid dearly for our reliance on Chinese drug manufacturers, and it's not going to stop because that vulnerability is leveraged in the hands of madmen in Beijing who seek nothing but power and will go to any lengths to acquire that power. They don't care who they hurt. That's clear with this global pandemic. They don't care if it is innocent people that are sick or maybe even that lose their life. And they defy us. They defy us when we try to stop them. It's time that we rise to the challenge and that we return the supply chain. I yield the floor 